last week, just a two week series talking about doubts. Doubts. And so that's why we're going to continue on today. Doubts. I'm not talking about the kind of doubts that you have in life, you know, uh, wondering about certain things. We're talking about one type of doubt. And that doubt is when there's a time in your life as a Christian when you doubt if you're saved. If you doubt if you're, if you're a Christian, if, if there's anything going on in your life that uh, might make you do doubt some things. And last week we looked at three things that we talked about that would cause doubts. And today I'm going to look at three more things that we'll talk about that possibly can be uh, bring apart uh, some doubts. So we want to start off with what are we basing our salvation on? What are you as a Christian basing your salvation on, and we'll start off with the definition of salvation. This is the definition that we had last week. I'll put it back up there. Remember last week I said, take out your phones and take a picture of it, so you can put it, and so many of you put it on Facebook, but we need to understand what this means, and listen, listen, look what it says. Salvation is the deliverance, deliverance, by the grace of God from the eternal punishment for sin granted to those who accept by faith God's conditions of repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. By faith, and we're talking about repentance, remember that's a doing an about faith, doing about faith, and faith, uh, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we start doubting our salvation, we've got to understand that if we base our salvation on anything else than that right there, then we really going to open up the door for all kinds of doubts. And so we're going to look today about three different Three other ways that uh, might bring us to doubt our salvation. And so I want to open up a prayer and we'll jump right into this, okay? Then we'll jump into our, our Bibles. Let's pray. Father God, I come to you right now to thank so much for Father this morning in Emily. Father, standing tall for you. Father, we thank you for the worship of music, our praise band, Mark. Father, we just tell you work here in our music. Father, I, I thank you for your word. Father, we stand on your word. Father, I, I thank you for each one that is here. It's not by accident, God. We have a divine appointment with you. And Father, today as we open your word, speak to our hearts, speak to our minds. Father, today it's all about you. We love you and we thank you. We ask you in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you got your sword ready? Amen. Let's see those swords cross the room. I, I am just, you guys are encouraging me. I love that. All right? I'm just saying, God, uh, we cannot live by. <laughs> you guys are getting better. You guys are getting a whole lot better. All right. Well, the first reason today that, that might happen to bring some doubt into your life, it might be because we are misreading Scripture. Misreading Scripture. You know, sometimes we can, uh, we have people that take a, a scripture out and say, well, what about this? And they, they try to trick you. This past Wednesday, we were walking through our, our Bible study, and there was some scripture that come out that I used that uh, I said that, you know, someone who believes maybe that they can lose their salvation, they'll sometimes quote this scripture. And if we were to read just that scripture alone, there's a possibility that we could have doubts come into our life. So what I'm going to do, I'll let you know a few weeks down the road, I'm going to be talking about eternal security. I'm going to preach a series on that. You need to be here for that. All right? Now, let's read some scripture. I'm going to take these, these sections of scripture and we'll go from there. Go ahead and take your Bibles. Turn to Hebrews. Hebrews. We'll go to Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. The scripture will be on the, the screen for you. But I love to hear those pages turn. And I'm going to say this. Get those fingers licked because today we're going deep into God's word. Okay? Amen. Deep into God's word. Hebrews chapter 6, we'll be looking at verses 4 through 6. The Bible reads this way. For in the case of those who once been enlightened, who have once been enlightened, have tasted of the heavenly gift, and have been made partakers of the Holy Spirit, and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come, and then have fallen away, it is impossible to renew them again to repentance, since, the, uh, since they again crucified to themselves the Son of God and put him to open shame. 
So if we were to read that, just that section alone, we could say, well, someone could, who had been had tasted the salvation of Jesus Christ could fall away. It says it right there. But we're just taking that scripture, and that's it. And we'll just stop right there. Go, go to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. I want to show you another one. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through 23. I love to hear those pages turn. On Wednesday nights, we 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 don't read until pages are stopped. Uh, I can't do that today uh, due to time restraints. There's a drop door up here. If I go over 12:45, I'm just kidding. But I've been in that one. I won't be here 12:45. You're here 12:45. Turn the lights out. Okay. Matthew chapter seven, verse 21 through 23. Look what it says here. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And then I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Now, that's Jesus Christ talking right there. And if I was just going to read that section of scripture... I would hope that I'm not one of those people who have been saying, Lord, Lord, and then he says, depart from me. So it's kind of funny that at times we can take just sections of scripture and we can allow doubts to enter our minds. We can't do that. we got to understand it as a whole. We need to understand that. And what happens is from time to time as Christians, we will slip up and we'll go, well, maybe I'm not saved. I, I committed a sin. Maybe I am going to go to hell. Maybe I am going to be one of those ones who have been saying, Lord, Lord. And he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. What do we say about that? What do we say? You know, it's pretty scary. And, and, and I, I just gotta, I, I gotta say, I, I mess up from time to time. The thing is, I, I, Linda, can I use you just for a minute? Can I, we talked Wednesday night. Linda come up, we talked about that. And she, she was raised in a church that did not believe in eternal security. And she, as a young teenager, got deep into God's word. And she started reading it from cover to cover. And she went to her parents and she goes, I have read this thing from cover to cover, and under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, I believe that I can never lose my salvation. Amen. Amen. And that's because you read it from cover to cover. And so sometimes what happens is if we misread Scripture, and we just take that section and we don't take it as a whole, we go, well, I must be lost. I have doubts now. You see what I'm saying? I've got doubts because I didn't read the whole scripture. So it's important that we know what we know what we know. Listen, it is important that you get involved in small groups. Amen. Okay? Men's group, ladies group, youth group, young single group. You need to be in a Bible study class. I'll just tell you. Amen. Okay? That's the way you're going to grow. You need to be in a Bible study class. Uh, okay, you you need to be uh, as a church have godly teachers. Listen, we will not fill a spot in the church just because the spot's empty. We look for that person that is uh, a godly person to fill that spot as teaching. Amen. We just want to throw someone in there to do that. They got to be godly teachers. Listen, you need you need to have godly pastors. All right? You, you need to have a passion to preach God's word. Amen. If not, get him out of here. Amen. We, we need to have teachers that's going to guide us, passion that's going to guide us. You know, anybody can draw an audience. Mm -hmm. If I bought a stadium, I bet you I could fill it too. If I had enough money, I, I, I bet you I could write a book. I'm telling you, I, I know I could write a book about all the things I've experienced in my life. And I like it. I, I, if I had enough money, I'd advertise that book and I'd become a bestseller. You need to watch who you're listening to. Amen. Okay? You need to watch what you're allowed to come into your life. And you'll get pastors and teachers up there talking about things and say, well, you know what? The Bible's not relevant anymore. Shame on them. Amen. The Bible's alive. Amen. Okay? Go back to John 1 1 and we can read about that. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God. Amen. Amen. 
You tell me God's dead? That, that, that word right there applies to me today. So let's look at some other scripture. Can we do that? Let's look at some other scripture. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I told you to lift those fingers. We're, we're flipping it today. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2. Remember, we're talking about doubting our salvation, doubting our salvation. Look what it says here. For I determined to know nothing among you except who? <coughs> Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Mm -hmm. I need to know what I'm basing my salvation on. Amen. Okay, it's Jesus Christ and nothing else. Some of them are still dead. Let's go to John. Let's go to John 6, 37. Let's go to John. Turn over to John chapter 6, verse 37. If I was you right now, this verse right here, underline, circle, star it. I, I, I'm not a rabbit ear type of person, but I would want to know right where this was. I would open up the back of my Bible and put doubts. Go to John, John chapter 6, verse 37. Okay? Look what it says right here. All that the Father gives me will come to me. And the one who comes to me, I will certainly not cast out. I will certainly not cast out. Hey, hey, listen. If you have if you have questions about your salvation, you need to take it to the Lord. Amen. God, is this for me or is this for Satan? Hey, if you got questions about your your your, your salvation, if you're doubting, get into God's word. Look in there and, and where it says, you shall be saved, not you might be saved. Look, go to John chapter 6, verse 37. He's not going to cast me out. Listen to me. Put that next one up there for me, Tony. Tony, listen to this right here. Look at this. God the Father through Jesus Christ wants to save us more than we want to be saved. Amen. Listen. A God that loves you so much that gave His only begotten Son to die on the cross to go through what He did for you. Amen. You're worth something. You're bought with a price. Amen. He wants you to come. God wants people to get into heaven. He's not in the business of casting them out. Amen. He wants you there. He's providing the way. All right, let's, let's move on. Let's move on. The second reason we may doubt today is obsessing with sin. Obsessing with sin. We'll go back to Hebrews chapter 12. Go back to Hebrews chapter 12. And verse 1. I've used this scripture just here recently. And uh, it's a good one to go on. It's not a part of it. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore... Since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us. Remember we talked about that earlier? A cloud of witnesses that are cheering us on. The church body. Saying, Come on, you can do it. We have such a cloud of witnesses surrounding us. Let us also, here it comes, lay aside every encumbrance mm -hmm. and the sin which so easily entangles us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. We as Christians keep holding on to the sins of our past, of uh, right. our past life. Those sins will keep obsessing over what they will cause us to doubt. Have you ever said, boy, I wish I could give this sin up. I, I, this, this right here, I can't be a Christian if, this, if I got the sin. If you go to 1 John, if you read the whole book of 1 John, it talks about sin and, and that sin being in your life and, and ruling over your life. The lover of sin. I can tell you one thing. Any sin I've ever committed since I've been a Christian, I felt so bad afterwards, I had to just confess it to the Lord. I couldn't allow it. I hated the fact that I did it. You know what I'm saying? Amen. So when we as Christians trust Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, 
we have to say, okay, under the guidance of the Spirit, God, what do I need to nail to the cross? What, do, what sin in my life do I need to turn over to you? Nail to the cross. You have to lay it to the side. Look at Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Get back to Romans 6. Let us stay here. Even so, consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God, Christ Jesus. Amen. You know, I, I, I gotta tell you, <clears throat> if you have a pattern of sin that disentangles you and enslaves you, but living in that way of life, you need to, to make some changes. Amen. I, I think it was Einstein or someone said, you know, insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. You know, if you got a problem with drinking, and you come home every day and you're passing that bar and that's your hangout, you get a different route home. Amen. If you got a problem with an opposite sex person, then get another job. Amen. You need to get some, make sure someone's always around you so that you're 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 not gonna have that obsession. If you got a problem with uh, uh, pornography, put some locks on your computer. You can go to Triple X Church and have someone become uh, your your uh, uh, Accountability partner, and, and when you go on any site that, that you're not supposed to be on, it'll come to them. Okay, Amen. you can do these things, they're out there. Amen. You got to trust, and, and it's a battle. Sometimes you got to realize you're in that fight. You got to say, God, I need help. Amen. I need help. I need you. Amen. Strengthen me to get through this. Strengthen me to get through this. <laughs> Lay aside, nail it to the cross. I'm dead to that way of life. I cannot be guided by my fleshly desire. I have to be guided by the Holy Spirit. Stay right there in Romans. Look at verse chapter 8, verse 37. 8, 37. I love this verse. I love this verse. 8, 37. I want you to see this. Then all of these things, we overwhelmingly Conquer through him who loved us. <laughs> hey, you're a conqueror. Amen. You're not defeated. You might lose a battle from time to time, but that failure does not define who you are. You're not a failure, okay? You're not fighting for a victory. You're fighting from victory. Jesus already gave you victory on the cross. Amen. You're a conqueror. You can do it. Yeah, you might struggle from time to time. But that's what we're trying to do in the flesh. Anytime I do something in the flesh, I'm probably going to fail. Amen. I need to do it in the Spirit of God. Amen. All right. My last one we'll look at. The last one we'll look at. Dry season spiritually. Dry season spiritually. As Christians, at time, uh, as a believer, there'll be times in your life where you'll go, you know what? I just don't feel very close to God right now. I, I, just, I just don't feel as present. And then other times you, you got people go, Woo, I feel so close to God right now. It's like he's sitting in the seat right beside me. It's like I have a conversation with him. He's right there with me all the time. You ever been in one of those places? I'm saying one of those places because sometimes you get in that dry season. Like, I, I've said it I've said in the church. I'm like, you know what? Sometimes I just, I, where's God at right now? Where, did he leave me? Where, what's going on? You ever, you ever feel like that? It's like, God, I just wish you'd chill up. I, I, I just, I, well, oh, 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 oh. let's go to James. Uh, uh, I, write this down. James chapter 4, verse 8. The Bible says that draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. If you draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. Hebrews 13, 5 tells us that God will never leave you or forsake you. Amen. Never leave you. Did God leave you? No. Did he forsake you? No. Are you drawing near to God? You ever have those dry seasons spiritual? You go, I just don't know where God's at right now. Where are you at? God never left. He never leaves you. You might move away from it, but God needs to be in the center of your life. You might be out here. Guess what? You need to get back to God. Amen. You ever heard about that old husband and wife? They're driving along in the old pickup truck, the dog in the back, everything's going good. 
and he's driving along, and, and he's just driving there, and his wife sat over by the other side, and she goes, honey, why don't you sit by me like you used to? He goes, honey, steering wheel's right here. You just kept sliding over farther and farther away. <laughs> That's the way it is, huh? That's the way it is with God. Sometimes he's right there driving, and you go, I don't like where you're going. I'm going to slide over here. Amen. Hey, draw near to God, and he promises you that he'll draw near to you. Amen. You got to get in God's word. You got to worship. Hey, <coughs> I do this from time to time. I'll just go ahead and do it right now with a lot of I'll throw my hand up. I do this as an experiment right now. All right, play along with me at home right here. You ready? How many of you right now are just a little bit too hot in this room? Would you raise your hand? Just look across the room, okay? Some of you are hot, okay? Uh, all right. How many of you feel a little just cold? I, I just got, I need a jacket. But raise your hand. Come on, I want to see you. Raise those hands up. All right. Well, yeah, all right. Some of you just don't really care. Uh, how, many of you, how many of you are just fine? I'm comfortable. Look at that. Well, someone's fine. I'll tell you that right now. Isn't that the truth? I mean, hey, I, I guarantee you, I'll go back and look at there. It says 68 degrees for everybody. It's 68 degrees. Listen, you can't go off feelings. Sometimes you feel close to God. Sometimes you don't feel close to God. Sometimes you feel like you're in the center of the will. But guess what? Just like the temperature, sometimes you're hot. Sometimes you're cold. Sometimes you're just right. Amen. Can't go off feelings. You got to know what you know what you know. Amen. You need to know what God's word says. You, you, you can't. Sometimes you're warm. Sometimes. Second Corinthians chapter five says this: You cannot walk by you, you walk by faith, not by sight. Amen. Walk by faith, not by sight. I remember my father bringing me down here. Says Tony, I found us a church building. We can start meeting down here. We can have this plant right here. It'd be great. And we walked in. We didn't have the sides on there. And there was a there was a door right here with this this this. The spot right here. There was a door there. And we come in and there was cobwebs all over the place. There was racks all over the place. And I was like, this is going to be a church building. And, and the drummer from D.C. Talk come down. He goes, boy, if you're going to go in this place, you better love the Lord. I was like, boy, you just drove a stake to my heart, Rick. I mean, you're killing me. And I was like, boy, can't walk by sight. Because if I walk by sight, we'd never come here. Amen. But guess what? God had a vision. And we walk by faith. And just like little Miss Emily today, trust in Jesus Christ, her life has changed. Amen. Changed. Wow. You can't have to walk by faith. You've got to walk by faith. You know, uh, I have a son, and my daughter already graduated. She went to college, graduated top of class. And uh, 18 year old boys are getting ready to graduate this year from high school. I promise you one thing. I promise you one thing. When the teacher gives you a test, hmm. the teacher's always quiet. Yeah. Maybe you're going through a test right now. Maybe you're going through a test in your life right now, and God's kind of quiet. The teacher will sit there and go, you got to answer this for you on your own. And maybe you're walking through a test in your life right now, and you're saying, God, where are you? I need you right now. Where are you? He said, I've already given you everything you need to know. I've already given you the plan. You know I got you. Let's see how you will come through this. Amen. Cry out to him during that test. Amen. Go back to what you know, right? Go back to what you know. time in your life you go, God said it, I believe it, and honestly, God said it, that's it, that's it, Amen. <laughs> whether you believe it or not, okay, but he said it, and you got to take him at his word, the only thing I want you to look at, go to John 3, 16, 
we've already quoted this a couple times, Mark quoted it. I want you to go to John 3, 16, 17, and 18. And, and look what Jesus said. The Son of God, God the Son, that's what he said. John chapter 3. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Amen. For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. <coughs> he who believes in him is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. Today, I want to tell you, like, you might be doubting your salvation. You might be going through a time of test saying, God, where are you? You might be misreading scripture from time to time. But I want to tell you right now, you have got, you have got to base your salvation on God's word. Amen. You have got to base your salvation on what Jesus did, not what you did. Okay. It's all about Jesus. We have to step out and trust him. So God, you said it. I'm going to take you at your word. And I'm going to step out in faith. And I'm going to trust you. And then what happens is your life will be an ongoing demonstration that Jesus is Lord in your life. Remember, repentance. Tony, throw that definition of salvation back up there for me. I'm sorry. I didn't have that on there. Let's throw it back up. Look. Repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to know right now that you just can't say it. You gotta put some action. Your works will not work you in the head. Amen. Your works will come out because you're saved. Amen. You know, I, I love you, Lord Jesus Christ. I want to do some stuff for you. I'll, it just comes out natural. It comes out naturally that way. Repentance. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're putting your faith in anything else other than Jesus Christ, you're opening yourself up to God. Watering down the gospel. Jesus says, God's word says, it's all about him. Amen. Today you might be going through that test. You might be going through that quiet time. You just meet God. Maybe you're looking just to trust Jesus Christ today. Today we're going to give him an invitation. I'm going to invite you to step out, come down the aisle and say, Pastor, I want to trust Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. We'll have someone walk into another room, show you what God's word says, no force whatsoever, let you make the decision. Maybe you're looking for a church home. My goodness, we'd love to have you be a part of this church. Amen. Step forward and say, hey, I want to be a part of this church. I want to, I, I want to be right here. Some happening things are happening right here for the Lord. I want to be a part of it. Amen. We want to come to all and pray and say, you know what, God? I have doubted you. I have doubted my salvation today. I am giving all my faith and trust in you. And I know it's going to be a battle. 